In this video, we're going to be discussing zeros of polynomial functions. Now, when we say a zero, we're talking about where the function equals zero. So that means we're going to be looking for any input, any uh, x value that's going to lead to zero for an output. So going back to what we did for the last few videos, we talked about synthetic division, we talked about the remainder theorem. So here's some things that we can get from doing synthetic division by x minus k. So If we divide, if we divide a polynomial function so if we divide a polynomial function, let's call that f of x and if we divide that by x minus k and the remainder, this is the important part, and the remainder is zero okay then let's see what happens so if you've got a polynomial function that's divided by x minus k and you have a remainder of zero here's the information that we can get from it here's what this means then we have the following that means that x minus k is a factor of the function and remember, when something is a factor, that means it divides into it evenly, leaving us with a remainder of zero. It also means, so let's see, this guy would then mean that uh, f of k equals zero, which in turn means that x equals k x equals k is called a zero of that function f of x and it also means that the ordered pair k zero is an x-intercept it's an x-intercept for um, k being a real number So as long as k is a real value, it is a real number, then you're going to have this as an x-intercept. Because if you have a zero that ends up being imaginary, that's not going to make any sense at all for us to have that as an x-intercept. Because when we talk about graphing, we we're talking about graphing with real numbers. Okay, So there's a lot of information here. So if we find a k value through synthetic division that leads us to a remainder of zero, you can rewrite that guy as a factor. We know that f of k is equal to zero. We know that this guy is called a zero. And if that k value is a real number, then we get an x-intercept from that. So let's take that information and see what happens in this example. So suppose that I tell you that f of x is equal to x to the third minus 9x squared plus 11x plus 21. So I'm giving you this function, and, and I'm going to tell you that x minus 3 is a factor of f of x. Now by me telling you that this is a factor, that means that we should be able to divide by x minus 3 and have a remainder of 0. So it should go into it evenly. So when you do the synthetic division, and as long as you identify the k value correctly, you're going to have a remainder of zero. And that is super important for what we're trying to do here, because we're trying to find all of these zeros, all the zeros that we can have here. So here are what the instructions are asking for us to do. We want to write our function, write f of x as a product as a product of linear factors. I'm going to leave some space so that we can do that. Uh, part B is to list, list all zeros. And part C is to list all intercepts. 
All right, so there's a lot going on here, and these are the kinds of questions that we're going to be seeing on our next test. Um, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of stuff that I'm asking for you, and so these problems typically are worth more than other problems on the test. So here's, here's some things I want you to go ahead and get started on, start thinking about. So writing f of x as a product of linear factors means that you're going to rewrite f of x to be a bunch of parentheses as you factor this guy. Now, I gave you one of these factors. I gave you x minus 3. So you know that this is going to be x minus 3 times some other factors. Now, if you pay attention here, we have a degree of 3. So the expectation here is that we're going to have three linear factors. And if it says write as a product of linear factors, that means that the whole polynomial should be able to be factored completely down to linear pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and on good faith do two more sets of parentheses. And I'm going to fill that in in just a little bit. List all of the zeros. So x is going to equal, we're going to use the set notation, the little curly brackets there. And let's see what we know already. So if x minus 3 is a factor, that means, look what we have up here in the notes above, if x minus k is a factor, that means that k itself is a 0. So in this form, we've got the minus. So when we try to identify the k, we do the opposite of the sign that we see. We see negative 3, so that means that one of our zeros is positive 3. Since the degree is 3, we expect to have three total zeros. So we got one, and I should have two more zeros. Okay, So we're going to fill in those blanks here in just a little bit. List all intercepts, and this is where a lot of students kind of forget their minds. Okay, When I say list all intercepts, I mean not only the x-intercepts, but also the y-intercept. So you are always guaranteed to have a y-intercept because for polynomial functions, the domain is all real numbers. And if the domain is all real numbers, that means that you must include 0 which is the key ingredient for the y-intercept. And if you look at the original function, you plug in 0, that guy becomes 0, that's 0, 0, and you're left with 21. So there is your y-intercept. All right, for your x-intercepts, just like your zeros, you can have up to three x-intercepts, as long as those k values, those zeros, are real. So this 3 is real which means that I have an x-intercept already of 3 comma 0. And I can have up to two more x-intercepts. It just depends on what those other zeros are. And this is where we now go off to the side and we do our work. So, off to the side, we're going to do our synthetic division. Okay, so here's k and our headings like we were doing in the other videos, x to the third, x squared, x, and the constant. Down here is supposed to be my remainder. Now, if things are right, and if this guy really is a factor, then down here this is supposed to be a zero, so let's make sure that it is. Your k value is positive 3. We have 1x to the third minus 9x squared plus 11x plus 21. So first things first, we bring down the 1, and then we go through that process of multiplying and adding. So multiply times k, which is 3. So there's 3. Negative 9 and 3 is negative 6. Multiply times the k value of 3 again. We get negative 18. Combine these guys, we get negative 7. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21, and we get a remainder of 0. Okay, That was the key thing. That's what we needed to see. Okay, So by having a remainder of 0, we can verify that x minus 3 is a factor. But now we get to the rest of this. This is where we take this information. Now this is going to be for x squared and x and my constant. And let's see what that means. That translates to be x squared minus 6x minus 7. Now, you're trying to find the rest of the zeros, so you set this remaining part equal to 0 and you solve it. 
This is a nice quadratic. We can factor this. So this becomes x minus 7 times x plus 1. So think about what happened here. This x minus 3 was a factor of this polynomial. And so when we factor that, we try to see how many times does it go into that polynomial. And this is our result. This is our quotient, the answer from doing synthetic division. And this other part factors here to x minus 7 and x plus 1. And so that's what goes here, x minus 7 and x plus 1. And if we take each of these factors individually, the 0 that we get from this factor, from x minus 7, is positive 7. The 0 we get from x plus 1, imagine, if you are setting that equal to 0, what do you get? Well, you'd subtract 1, and so that's your third 0. And now to finish answering all the questions here, 3 becomes the x-intercept, 3, 0. 7 becomes the x-intercept, 7, 0. And then we get negative 1, 0. So for this problem, we found all three factors. We found all three zeros. And since all three zeros were real, each one became or corresponded to an x-intercept. And then, of course, there was the y-intercept, which we are always going to have for a polynomial function. So stick around, and let's see if these problems get any more difficult.